everyone i hope you all are well and having a good day so far so recently i started making my own candles at home it is no secret my love for candles as i almost always have a candle burning in my home every day but we all know unfortunately most candles that we buy from the store are full of toxic ingredients that are very dangerous for our well-being that's why i've been wanting to make my own candles for quite some time because if there's one way to get guarantee your candles are free from toxic ingredients is to make them yourself and now that I think I got the hang of it I want to share this video for beginners as a guide with all of my best tips that I've learned so far I'm going to show you guys how to make a variety of different candles so you can see you don't have to be an advanced candle maker to make beautiful candles so before we get started on this video please be sure to subscribe to my channel down below hit that thumbs up and with all of that said let's get to it all right guys so first thing first let's talk about what you need to make candles so you definitely need some wax empty containers wicks and wick holders you need a thermometer a scale and these are optional but you need some fragrance oil for scent and some color dye that is made for candles and lastly you need a small melting pot or you can also use double boiler now the question is which wax to use there are many different types of waxes that you can use to make candles today i'll be using beeswax and soy wax as they are all natural non-toxic and therefore safe to burn in doors. Beeswax actually has been in the production of candles for thousands of years. There are actually some reports that show beeswax purify the air. And not only beeswax burn with a natural soft glow, it also has a higher burn point so your candles will last longer. And even if you don't scent your candles with any essential oils or let's say fragrance oils, Beeswax candles have an amazing natural and sweet aroma on their own. Just keep in mind it is not vegan. Now soy wax is also a non-toxic all natural wax that is made from soybean oil and it's becoming very popular because it is renewable, sustainable and biodegradable. So it is definitely another great all natural choice and it is actually very easy to use so it's really great for beginners. It mixes well with dyes and fresh oils and it emits very minimal soot and I like it because it's actually very easy to clean it cleans well with soap and water so by far it is the easiest wax to clean so now I'm just going to gather all of my supplies and we're going to make our first candle Now for the first batch, I wanted to keep it very simple, so I am making all 100% beeswax candle and I thought this container would be great for this, so I'm going to start by measuring out my wax and the easiest way to do this is by putting your container on top of your scale and you can fill it up with water just leave about an inch and a half space at the top and use your kitchen scale to find out the weight so you can measure out your wax and fragrance oil if you're using any. Now to melt your wax, you can definitely use a double boiler, that's how I started. But today I'll be using my sweet little melting pot because I really like this thing. It heats up quickly, it's very easy to use and it has this built-in spout so I don't have to dirty up any more dishes. But if you are planning on a larger scale candle making operation, I recommend you get a larger melting pot like this one. So I will make sure to link everything I'm talking about or using in this video in the info box below. Now I should mention there are three temperatures that are very important when it comes to making candles. The first one is melt point. This is the temperature at which the candle will start melting. This is only only something to consider if you are planning on shipping your candles for business or selling them in outdoor markets in high heat. And the second one is mix temperature. This is the proper temperature for you to mix the fragrance oil in the melted wax. And lastly, the pour temperature. So this is the proper temperature for you to pour the melted wax inside your container. So every wax you're gonna buy, it's going to come with its own instructions. I highly recommend you follow these instructions for the best results. Now I'm going to turn my heat off and while we wait for the wax to cool down to temperature, I can start prepping my container. It is always best to be cautious with the container you choose for your candles. You definitely want to choose 
something that is heat safe like a glass ceramic or cast iron you don't want to choose something like plastic or wood and choosing the right wick for your container is crucial in candle making because if you choose a wick that's too small you're going to experience what they call candle tunneling when the wax adheres to the sides of the container while the center of your candle melts down or if you choose a wick that is too large you're going to burn off your candle way too fast so it's definitely a trial and error you have to do some testing to find the perfect match now with a steady hand i'm going to pour my melted wax inside of my container just be careful and if the wicks move around that's okay you can fix them while the melted wax is still hot and liquid now while my beeswax candle set i'm going to work on my next one so i am making a candle for this pot and i'm going to call it a wicked caramel apple so for this one i'm going to introduce some fragrance oil and some color dye and i am using all soy wax in here so i'm just going to turn my heat to low stick my thermometer in here so we keep an eye on the temperature for this one i'm going to let it get up to 185 degrees fahrenheit so i can add my fragrance oil now that my melted wax is up to temperature i'm going to add my dye and my fragrance oil and i'm going to mix it very well for one to two minutes to make sure the oil is fully mixed in with the wax now I should mention you should always check your wax and the fragrance oil for their recommendation for the proper temperature to mix the two together because it can vary. I know most fragrance oil manufacturers recommend that you add the fragrance oil to the melted wax when it reaches between 180 to 185 for a safer, more consistent scent throw now as far as for how much oil to add this really depends because again every wax has a maximum fragrance load so you can't add too much and expect that you're going to get a large scent throw that's not how it works if you add too much oil it's going to weigh down your wax and cause separation so a common amount is to add six percent which is about one ounce per pound this is what i usually aim for and i like it but this could be adjusted up and down depends on your wax and your personal preference all right guys next we are making my famous pumpkin spiced latte in a candle version and i'm using this beautiful glass shaped pumpkin for this one and i'm also using a mix of 75 percent soy wax and 25 percent beeswax and for this one i am making extra on purpose so i can put some in these silicone mold and show you guys how those are done and to make it look like coffee we're definitely going to use some brown and orange dye and for fragrance i made a mix of vanilla coffee and pumpkin by fragrance oil to make it smell really good like actually pumpkin spice latte and let me tell you this smells amazing so i'm just waiting for my wax to melt down i wanted to get to 160 fahrenheit so i can add my dye and fragrance oil and then we can pour it right away now the reason why I chose to do 75% soy wax and 25% beeswax is because soy wax is very easy to work with and it's a fragrance so it accepts fragrance oil very well and it throws good hot and cold but unfortunately soy wax frosts it is not a flaw it is just 100% soy wax and that's what it does it is only a problem when you are using a mold like this and it's only visible when you are using coloring so we use a little bit of beeswax to help with this problem and also beeswax helps harden our candles faster it burns longer and it purifies the air all right guys so after about two hours you can go ahead and bunch a hole in the center of each mold if you are planning on using a wick now when you want to remove them from the mold i suggest you wait at least overnight to do this but if you are in a hurry six to eight hours is good enough maybe you can pop them in the fridge before you remove them from the mold for about five to ten minutes and then when you get them out of the fridge try to work the mold pull on the sides and bottom really really well before you try to remove them
Alright guys, once your candles harden up, you can go ahead and trim out your wigs, but I highly recommend you allow your candles to cure for a minimum of 3-4 to four days. Now, how cute is this? I can't decide which one I like the most, but I'm going to love having all these little candles all around my house because there's something so special about having a burning candle. I'm not sure what it is, but it is so fascinating to me how one little flame can actually spark romance, nurture relaxation, and elevate one's atmosphere. And Candles make a great gift idea if you are looking to DIY something special for someone in your life. There is plenty of room for customization. You can change the color, the shape, and scent to fit their own unique taste. And I love that. But that's all I got for you guys today. I really hope that you all enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Now, if you did, please thumbs it up. Consider subscribing. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!